Morning, my name's Darren Whiten. I'm a Wiradjuri guy for Condoblin, New South Wales, and I'm here today to share a bit about my cardiovascular journey. I was uh, in my 40s, I was only 42, so just, uh, just not long ago, and uh, chest pain during the night, uh, admission into hospital, uh, with, into uh, intensive care, ICU, and then um, the strange thing with myself as a personal um, part of me is that after that there was no pain for three days, and we got to the stage where they were just about ready to send me home, and uh, then on the basis of my doctor then, Gordon Taylor, said because he has a family history, then let's just send him to Melbourne to make sure. And then when we get to Melbourne, um, we find that uh, having an angiogram, there's a blocked artery, they fix it there on the spot. That was a surprise to me. I was expecting them to say, okay, there's no blockages. Um, Aubrey ICU was right, you're ready to go home. But then uh, to be surprised uh, having an angiogram and then they fixed it on the spot. And then next thing you know, I'm a heart patient um, with a condition and medication and rehab and all, and all the things that follow from there. So uh, it was a bit of a whirlwind journey. It was quite fast um, that uh, took place. And then since then, um, yeah, things are going quite well. The first part of that journey was one of unbelief. Couldn't believe that I was uh, a diabetic. And then the spin-off to that was uh, involvement with cardiovascular disease. Felt like uh, as a young man, as a young dad, that I was just uh, too young and there was a bit of uh, unbelief that came along with that as well. Um, you describe it as a bit of a journey, so that's ups and downs, and from uh, unbelief to uh, uncertainty, uh, and then knowledge around what am I gonna do, how am I gonna do it, uh, and, and all of that has come with the support of uh, yeah, Aboriginal health services, which uh, break it down, which uh, make you feel more comfortable, and uh, I suppose help you break it down with certain goals to achieving uh, better control uh, with your uh, cardiovascular um, and your diabetes. So I think, uh, yeah, unbelief, I was a bit scared, uh, but um, then yeah, looking at making a journey from it, um, going forward uh, with the help of uh, support people around you. It was interesting, it was like uh, I was fit to go back to work, but then on uh, two mornings a week, I had to yeah, front up to Aubrey Hospital and uh, join in with a group of uh, elderly people, mostly elderly. I th I'm pretty sure I was the youngest there uh, in my 40s. And um, we had a little bit of uh, exercise program and that was individual, so that was really good. I wasn't sort of bound by um, exercise that only uh, older people would do. So I had, I had my own limits and that was monitored and, and it was good. The staff were quite um, helpful. And then afterwards we'd have a healthy morning tea and then there'd be some education around medication, around uh, the heart and different areas of, I suppose, cardiovascular. And I found the information um, yeah, quite interesting. That, was, that went on for a number of weeks and I felt that after some time had passed, I'd uh, gotten on board with the exercise. I knew the information and, um, and, and afterwards, I, I think I finished that program and um, yeah, hadn't had the need to go back to any other cardio uh, rehab type stuff. So the challenge around it, I suppose, was it wasn't easy um, yeah, working out with uh, older people that were limited uh, with their mobility. Um, I was trying to be a gun on the, on the, um, on the equipment and on the treadmill and so forth, but I see the necessity of it um, and I found it um, yeah, just interesting being a young person having to do cardio rehab. At Melbourne, when I was first diagnosed with diabetes, was that it's, uh, there was a genetic um, a connection, so family history and uh, lack of exercise and being Aboriginal. So I sort of felt like there was, that was strike three and so no wonder I was uh, diagnosed. And then long-term diabetes, the medication, the management of all of that, I think um, lends itself towards cardiovascular issues, which if not uh, jumped on straight away, uh, and dealt with turn into yeah, serious ones and, and even fatality. So I was glad that one thing led to the other. I had uh, good education uh, and information. It wasn't like I was in the dark and I was just fearful and didn't know and things just happened. Um, when, when stuff happened, I knew about it. Um, the information was uh, really good in the different programs that we'd been involved in. Um, in the work that I was doing at the time, um, it allowed me the freedom to go to rehab or go to a program or doctor's appointments and so forth. I wasn't in full-time uh, work. And so that 
enabled um, the, the free time and the flexibility to attend a lot of programs that um, helped. Some of those programs were diet-based, exercise uh, and weight loss uh, challenges. Um, that's been part of the journey. Um, but I think the biggest part, just knowing that through the Aboriginal Health Service, um, getting on a care plan, which enabled me to uh, be taken care of for, with a number of issues, um, all at once with one visit. When I was first diagnosed in Melbourne, it was a case of um, having to go all over town uh, looking for specialists and appointments, and that was quite difficult. So uh, Aboriginal Health Service with a care plan uh, and, and that, the management that came with that, I found. Um, the biggest challenge is just yeah, long-term um, issues that aren't going to go away. It's like uh, you've got diabetes, you can reduce it, you can um, have better control, but it's always going to be there. And it's like this yeah, dark cloud hanging over your head. Uh, knowing that that led to heart issues. My dad passed away from a massive heart attack at 42. So that was a bit sort of emotional, um, a little bit scary around those issues. Um, and so here I was sort of on the cusp of doing the same thing. What was in my favour though, is the, um, the medical visits, the health professionals, the care plan. Um, I don't think my dad ever went to the doctors uh, unless he was on death's door, so to speak. And so in the past, our elders uh, have struggled because they don't have regular health checks and uh, they don't go to do doctors unless they're really, really sick. I think the easiest uh, or the go-to point would be to have uh, professional um, cultural awareness training and training that uh, makes you not just aware of Aboriginal culture, but the context for your local area or the field that you might be working in um, and having good, and that would lead to better uh, communication and consultation um, and not just talking um, clinical language, but um, yeah, breaking things down for Aboriginal people in everyday language um, and uh, yeah, forming a relationship to me seems to be the biggest key. When I was uh, working in, in pastoral care and in the health service here and even now in education, communication and developing um, some rapport and a relationship. If you come in, if you're treated like a number, if you're just treated like an appointment, the chances are you're not going to come back or you're going to struggle with uh, maintaining a good relationship with healthcare professionals. So for the professionals, um, quality uh, Aboriginal cultural awareness training that is contextualised to your field or your particular area, whether it be here locally um, or further afield. Um, and, uh, and the necessity to uh, not be afraid to form a bit of a relationship or even a connection and a bond with uh, Aboriginal people, um, that builds up trust. And when you have trust, you're able to yeah, uh, have a better uh, out outcome, uh, health outcome for Aboriginal people.